gonna start prepping this truck bed for removal. So we're gonna see if the over fenders come off. We're not sure if they do or not. To check that out, we're gonna get in here and take off uh, that, that liner down there and that'll show us if it is. Definitely gonna hang on to the flaps and reuse those things. We're gonna start getting the fill neck uh, loosened up so it's free from the uh, rear of the bed. Uh, take out the lights. Rear tail light's gonna come out and the rear bumper's gonna come off. Start to get everything kind of out of the way. down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. In my opinion, Raid is the best mobile MMORPG in the world. I've been playing it for years, and with it being the Valentine's Day season, they asked me to pick my top three favorite Valentine's Day themed heroes. Coming in at number three, we have Venus. Her attire is quite Valentine's y. Coming in at number two, Temptress. Gotta love the name, Temptress. And coming in at number one is Countess Licks. Great name, but also looks like a Cupid with the wings, but from hell. And Raid has new Valentine's Day events. New players can enjoy the Valentine's Day offer. All you gotta do is download Raid Shadow Legends from the links below, copy your in game player ID, and head over to raidlovequest.plarium.com. And running from February 14th to March 14th, you can play the Valentine's Day themed mini games for a chance to win fantastic in game prizes and real life prizes. And if you're an old Raid player like myself, you're not left out, you can still get a special Valentine's gift. Use the promo code right here on the screen and get a Valentine's Day gift from us to you. If you haven't started playing Raid yet, click the link in my description to go download it or use the QR code right here on the screen and you're gonna get unique bonuses worth $30, including a free epic champion, Chernoru, and other useful things. And all that's gonna be waiting for you right here. Click that link and I'll see you in the game. Thanks Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. The truck bed is bare. Now, we've pulled everything off as you guys saw in the film. The rear bumper's off, the side panels are off, a lot, a lot of stuff came out off of here and out of here. Then we gave it a little lift test. It is really heavy, like way heavier than we thought. This is about a six person or more uh, lift job. So we've got our crane that can hold one ton, which is plenty. This is not, this is not one ton. I think this is probably five to 600 pounds. I'd say the biggest problem is that we can't get enough hands around it. Also with now that we're in this temporary shop, by the way, now's as good a time to mention as any, we are this close to getting the new shop. Um, we are, we thought we were at the final negotiation agreement and then uh, one more crept up. So meeting again today to negotiate. This close. Anyways, in this tiny shop, we got a wall right there. And then as we come over here, we've got a wall right here. We're very, very scrunched in. We're in, I think a little shy of like 28 feet from side to side. So the truck bed can't just be lifted up and pulled over here and walked out that way. It doesn't fit. So um, the game plan right now is to pull it off of the truck, lean it on its kind of face side right here while suspended by this thing and then leave it over there so we can get to work on this back part of the truck. That's the game plan, we'll see how it goes. So walking through here, there's a few interesting things. So we got our spare uh, spare tire. You can see there's some air hoses running down to the airbags. Those are helper bags for uh, for when they were using. This was definitely a gooseneck towing rig, and that leads up to. So as those bags are empty, we should just be driving on the OEM springs. That'll be good for us. Uh, we will set the system back up though in case we want to tow more. Um, and then this is the gooseneck receiver. This is just bolted into the frame here, uh, but we may use this for a little bit more structural support. We got our fuel tank running right back through here, which is like the high point, the limitation for uh, the floorboarding. The exhaust might be aftermarket. It looks a little shinier than most things, and there is no catalytic converter on there, which is nice, because that's one less thing to get stolen. So let's talk about the game plan moving forward and what we're really looking at doing right now. So I've told you guys, this is designed to be a camper box in the back that leads into the cab. Two really important things with that. One is, that's not normal. Normally you have your camper box that would sit here or in the back of your truck bed, and it goes over and it stays separate 
separated from the cab. I really don't want to have that. I want to have it be one piece. But um, that brings up a few good points that people have talked about. One is flex and two is safety. So I'll address safety first. The game plan is that we're going to build a support roll bar in the back of the cab um, to keep the cab area safe. And you only ever, when the vehicle's moving, you're only ever in the cab. Nobody's ever in the camper box while the vehicle's in motion. So that's safety down. Um, and then the second one is flex. What happens, uh, why truck beds are separated from the back of the truck is this frame will wanna flex a little bit. And you can see there's stiffeners right here to help this thing not flex as much. Things like this that go across here really help the frame from flexing like this when you go over uneven terrain. We're gonna need to add some more of those because <laughs> if this frame, say if these two wheels go over a curb and those ones stay there and this frame flexes like this over a certain threshold, it will break our rear camper box off of the cab. We are planning on trying to hard mount it all in here. We're going to use rubber isolators for the camper box and we're going to try and weld the camper box to the cab and make it all one unit. If it does not work, that's what we do at BS for Build. We build things, we test it, we'll let you guys know how it turns out. So if it doesn't work, uh, I'll let you guys know and then we're going to have to put rubber isolators in between the back of the cab and the camper back, which I don't want to do uh, because I feel like that could get messy with waterproofing and a bunch of other stuff and wind noise. So I want to try and do it with metal first and hope it'll survive and if it won't survive then we'll have to go and do a rubber joint to allow flexibility between the cab and the camper back so the best way that we're going to help it reduce flex is by adding more gussets and things like that into the frame and that's going to help the frame from doing any of this in theory if we run over a curb and it was a really really rigid frame it looked like those brz's going into driveways where these wheels just go over the curb and those ones stay in the air so how do we do that? We need to put some more strengthening into this frame. Game plan is right now, we're gonna reuse the steel that's in this gooseneck mount because there's some really good steel here, very, very thick. We're gonna cut it, slot it down into the frame, weld it in there to the frame. There's a support going across here, and then we gotta engineer a support to go across here and across here. And then once we have all those supports in, that's as tight as we're gonna get this frame, minus a little potential gusseting, and we can start looking at how we wanna lay the foundation out for our floor. Note to self, I gotta order a bunch more of these rubber isolators. Reinforcements are in. So we've got those two ladder bars coming through there. We took the gooseneck thing, trimmed it down to size, just dropped it down in there. Reason being, this thing's got a lot of good steel on it. That's quarter inch thick angle iron right there. And that's straight up inch thick by maybe two inch thick, just straight bar of steel. So it was very, very uh, good metal to use in that shape. Figured why not go ahead and weld it in there. And with this box being welded in the center too, it's really, really gonna help with that torsional uh, stiffness. So that's awesome. Now, uh, our measurements call for coming 130 inches off the back there to go over here, which means we're going to want to lengthen our frame rails a little bit. All right, we wrestled that thing off of there and now we got proper measurements of the frame. So we will extend the frame back and we're gonna start, we're gonna make a trip down to metal supermarkets here soon to try and start sourcing the metal for our floor of our camper box. So we're gonna extend the frame rails and then the floor of the camper box is built off of that. It's all isolated by bushings which are landing here this weekend. So we may or may not have them in time, but we can always build it and then put the bushings underneath it afterwards. So we're gonna start planning and sourcing materials for the floor of the box. It goes from there to 130 inches back and as wide as the wheel width. Uh, we also are gonna cut that bad boy out, that wall right there so we're going to start trimming down the interior of there just gut the whole interior so when we make the cut we won't damage anything there is a meaning buried within the 
Got the interior nicely gutted out. Kyle got that all gutted, and now we're gonna go ahead and start working on cutting the window out. Uh, we jumped on YouTube to find a instructional video. That's not exactly how we're gonna do it. Um, we ran and got a blade for our reciprocating saw. We're gonna cut inside this channel here. It's kind of like a sandwich between two pieces of metal with glue in the middle, and we're just gonna cut that level of glue, similar to how we did like our rear quarter glass window. And then we're just gonna be real careful and cut it out. I wanna reuse this window, uh, build it out in a little bit different way, but I'm gonna reuse it on the back of the box. That window is a struggle to get out. It's really, really hard to get out, but we got it out. So this is kind of, it's hard to film. The doors are a little narrow, but that's kind of what it looks like now. This is the window glass out and good news, we laid it flat on the ground and it doesn't have too much bow to it in any angle. It looks very curved when it's in the vehicle, but it's actually not too much in reality. So we're gonna be able to use this on our rear back hatch, which is awesome. Shipment of steel is in. The, this is one of the pieces. Here's another piece right there. We're test fitting stuff and we've got a bunch more. We're using two by two with eighth, eighth inch wall um, to do our floor. So we're gonna start construction on the floor of the camper bed. Now remember, there's gonna be bushings that come off of the frame, so we're gonna be spacing right now. You can see over there, we've got a little spacer emulating where the bushings are gonna go. And we're gonna build this whole thing two inches off and uh, two 11 footers going this way. And then we've got other things coming in this way. We're gonna go ahead and cut and tack everything into place and see how it looks. Guys, this is quite a turning point in this build. This is where it starts to get real, like how big of a thing we're building. And it's really, really exciting now because it's it's just starting to take shape, this whole crazy thing that we're doing. Before it just felt like we were working on a truck. Now it really feels like we're building like a, a habitat and it's really, really cool. So I'm very excited about this. This is our two inch by two inch flooring beams that are gonna run in through here. We've isolated, or we've emulated the uh, riser bushings. Um, we have those now and we've got the floor. It's all just tacked in place, but we've got all the floor in. And now it's time to cut out the back of the truck so we can start planning how we're gonna attach the floor to the back of the truck. So we're gonna, um, it's, it's kind of interesting because this part is actually really wide. When you go onto the inside of the truck, there's a beam that comes through here and it goes to here. So we have to leave this a little bit thicker than I was initially planning, but it shouldn't be a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the back of the truck out now. This is pretty exciting. The back is all cut out now. This is gonna be the most challenging part of the build is making this nice transition to go from car interior into like almost more apartment interior. But this is super exciting. We're talking about different ways to attach these two different things, the bed and that. But that is to come in the future. For now, we're gonna keep working on the bed. Oscar's gonna start, we, we tacked it all together. We really like the shape of it. So we need to, there's a few more processes that we're trying to do. We need to fully weld it out um, and then we're 
we're gonna skin the bottom with steel and then um, we need to soundproof the bottom of that steel or put a protective coating on the bottom of that steel and then we need to insulate it as well. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done in the bottom of our, uh, our floor, our flooring. So Oscar is gonna start welding. Uh, this is a part of the episode that's actually really fun for me. We get to call the person that won the 370Z giveaway car and let them know they want a car. See how this goes. I've never done this before. I'm very happy about this. Hey, is this Ben? Yep. Hey, Ben. This is Chris from BS Rebuild. Hi. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going good. Do you have any idea why I might be calling you? Uh, well, I can only think of... Did you recently? Oh, did you recently buy some merch that made you eligible, or did you uh, enter for free on our website? I did. Well, man, I'm calling to let you know that you are the winner of our 370Z drift car. No way. Yeah, man. I'm very, very happy to be giving this away to you. <laughs> huh. I, I cannot believe this. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, uh, statistically, somebody has to win, and this time it was you. So. I'm really, really stoked about it. I'm stoked that we're going to be giving this to you. That was really cool and that was really, really fun. I, that put a smile on all of our faces. Yesterday, I just did, uh, I did another cancer scan at the beginning of this week. Yesterday, I just got the good news back that I am still clear of cancer. So I got some really good news. So I really wanted to call uh, Ben yesterday, but I didn't have his phone number. So call him today to give him some good news too. It's been just good news all around. So we're super stoked. This has been a really fun experience for us. And um, I'll be very honest with you guys. We didn't make some like ton of money, but we did make a little bit of money off of the merch sales. And what we're going to do is we're going to bundle all that up to buy a a roughly doubly expensive car to give to one of you guys the next time. I'd like to keep stepping that up until we're in the like the GTR, the Lamborghini, the R8, the Ferrari range of cars. So we can just be giving away really, really killer cars to people. This was a test run to see how it went. It went phenomenally and I want to thank everybody for your guys' support and it's brought a lot of joy to us to be able to give away a car to somebody. So this was really fun and we're going to keep doing it and try and make it even more and more special every time we do it. So we'll let you know when the next car has been chosen. I'll be totally honest with you guys. I don't have one yet. I got to get one. Let me know in the comments what car you guys would like to have us give away. If it's like a car that we could maybe buy and do some quick mods and make it unique, our style or whatever, let me know. Or if you guys want one from my collection, you probably can't have it. All right, back to work. We built a metal wall. Just kidding, it's a metal floor. Uh, <laughs> this thing is a little bit intimidating. I don't know, it's gonna be very hard for us to lift this giant wall and like put it over there. It's uh, eight, three, eight foot three tall, 11 feet long. It's gonna weigh several hundred pounds. But uh, this side faces the bottom of the vehicle, so we need to protect it from the elements. On the truck, they just used a pretty heavy duty um, paint. We are gonna use a little bit of paint with sound deadening in the form of Raptor Liner. Raptor Liner, this isn't a sponsored thing, but it, it's a really good product and it's a good DIY product. I Raptor Line my FJ Cruiser and it's been holding tough for a very long time. I think that was seven years ago. So um, I do like this product. Like I said, it's not sponsored, but, um, and we're gonna, rather than spray it because we're so close to like nice cars, we're actually gonna do a roll on technique, which should be just fine. We're just gonna use small disposable rollers and uh, hit this first with acetone to clean it up and we're going to roll it on and then once it's uh dried up enough that we can touch it we'll go ahead and throw it on here
We got some great results with the Raptor liner here. It's uh, it's definitely dried up now. And this is the first time we've actually tried rolling it on and it really, it did well. Dried up in a couple hours. So we've got a nice thin coating on there and that's gonna do the job. What we kind of realized that we need to do next is extend our frame rails. So this is 11 feet long. The truck bed was not 11 feet long. So we need to extend our frame rails back out a little bit more so we can have the frame rails support the, the rest of the um, floor but also so we can have our tow hitch back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the frame rails and extend them similar to how they do it on factory. Okay, they didn't have the exact size steel we needed, but we followed the same type of uh, thing. So you see how this is like pocketed there? We covered this all in steel it to be nice and corrosive resistant. So it's like pocketed there. We did the same thing here where we cut that off, pocketed in, and then we came back out to here and then welded it back on. Um, we made sure it's all nice and straight and obviously the tow hitch bolts back in too. When we have trouble getting steel, sometimes one way that we found to do this, it makes it really, really strong is we use multiple pieces and then we weld them together as well to fill the hole. And what that gives you is these like extra lines of steel, extra runs of steel horizontally through. And it makes like more of a honeycomb style like pattern and it makes it a lot stronger. So it, uh, it'll definitely do the job. So now the big task is to take this big heavy floor I think we're gonna set it down on the ground like this, lift it up from the ground, walk it over the truck and set it on our isolation bushings, uh, which are right here. So we bought bushings and hardware, ordered these on Amazon. Some nice little polyurethane isolation bushings that are gonna go between the bed and the frame to help with that little bit of flex. The floor is on the truck frame rail. So under here, very hard to see, well, not even that hard to see. That's our isolation bushings. And you can see that we have some sections here that we're getting really close to the bed. And some of them even protruding. So we cut those out and then we're gonna build like little domes around them. All that means is in this one little spot, it's not gonna have insulation uh, before the floorboards. That's okay. So we, the, the lower we can keep this, the higher we can make the roof and still get out of the garage door and have more walking room and everything. So we decided to go this way. It's looking really good. Next part is to drill the holes precisely through the frame rail in or through our floor rail, sorry, into where the OEM um, truck bed pickup points were. So there's one as an example. Um, and that way we can send bolts through our isolators and through our frame rails of the truck. We're gonna bolt it on. We have eight isolators on here, we're under here. We're gonna bolt it on in eight places. And then after we have it exactly where it goes, it can get um, attached to the cab. Well guys, we got as far as sending a couple bolts, the first few bolts through the uh, floor and through the isolators and through the frame. Um, we got that whole side done. 
but the somewhat unexpected happened, which a lot of you guys, I'm sure across America are dealing with right now. Big snowstorm, lots of snow dumped. There is, today is now the next day. There's a foot of snow outside. So we all had to kind of get home and make sure that we could get situated. I live closest to the shop, so I just drove out here. Um, and uh, that's where we're gonna cut this episode. Um, and in the next episode, we'll finish getting the floor mounted and then we will start to build the framing of the entire box and the over cab box and all of that stuff. We'll get it all framed out. This is really exciting because it's finally starting to look like a camper. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate you all. Please remember to subscribe so you don't miss anything. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Everybody stay safe, stay warm. Peace! <laughs>